Hey, everybody. Oh, I usually don't have boxes sitting in the background, but I got a new Fitbit today, and that's what that was from. Anyway, hope y'all are having a great day. I hope that you have had a wonderful Tuesday getting back into the groove of things after the holiday, the Independence Day holiday. If you are on Facebook, please take a second just to say hello. You don't have to hang out the whole time if you know what I'm doing and how to use the website, but I do love the hellos. So just take a chance to say, take the time to say hello and give a couple of hearts and thumbs up. And most importantly, you could share this because this allows people to see what Shibboleth has to offer, and they may want to get their own membership with Shibboleth. And currently, a membership with Shibboleth is only $69 for a lifetime, a lifetime membership. That is very, very inexpensive for the lifetime of support, ongoing support, ongoing education, ongoing and updated food library, recipe library, and restaurant guide. It's absolutely amazing. So if you want to get that membership, you go to www.shibolithdeals.com. And then when it asks how you heard about Shibboleth, please put in the name of the person that you heard about Shibboleth from. So we'd love to have you join us. Hey, Cheryl on Facebook. Um, Okay, I love that. And shared the way to go. That's awesome. That is awesome. Thank you, Cheryl. I appreciate it. Hi, Cindy. Cindy did the PB and J challenge today with Jonathan. That's awesome. That's fun. That's fun to do that with other people. Good. I'm glad they did that. Thank you for saying hello. Let's see who we've got in the Zoom room. Oh, Tabitha. Hey, Tabitha. Tabitha is studying and just asking the best questions, y'all. If you've got questions, please don't hesitate to ask them. We are here to answer things for you. Hey, Ruthann and Elise, glad y'all are here in the Zoom room. And Patricia is back. Stephanie is back. That's awesome. Hey, Jenny. Jenny's here. Okay, this is awesome. I love having a full class and we're getting that tonight. Uh, the one thing I want to say is, this, uh, Ruth Ann, if you'll look at your chat where it says all panelists, click it, click that and then choose the option for all panelists and attendees. Now, the reason I do that is because if somebody asks a question, then everybody will see it. And then when I just answer it, it doesn't look like I'm an answering random questions out of the air. So it just helps for everybody's chat to be set to all panelists and attendees. Hey, Michelle, I'm glad you're here with us. Hey, Deb, I know you're there too. And Wendy, Wendy Montgomery, glad y'all are here. Awesome. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started. Tonight, we are going to be exploring the food library, talking about the timing chart and some other things that are really important. So I'm gonna go here and I've got it pulled up already to the fast track lap three. Now, I would highly suggest that y'all save this as a favorite on your favorites bar. Do you see like I have these things all saved here because these are things that I go to frequently. And so they're all saved right there. And that Shibboleth is one of them right there. But I would save it. And whenever you log in, but I, okay, let me explain this way. If you'll save it while it's logged in, it saves you logged in and you don't have to log in and out. But once you're in your fast track laps, if you pop out of fast track to look at something else, you might be thinking, how do I get back to fast track? Well, what you do is you simply hit dashboard and then click, click fast track. If you're brand new, fast track should pop up right away when you click dashboard. But if for some reason it doesn't, you just click right there. Hey, Michelle, Michelle's back with us today. Hope you had a great Tuesday as well. So we're, we're doing lap three tonight. There is not a night where I go over lap one and lap two. Those are just, they're meant to be on your own, okay, because a lot of it's just printing some documents and things like that that you can read. Some of it is liking some Facebooks and joining some groups if you have that. And then lap two is really all about you finding out more about you. 
And that's something that can just be done on your own with the tutorial video that's on lap one and two. That'll help too, okay? But tonight, we're going to explore the food library, our timing chart, and I'm going to show you a worksheet that I like for people to fill out. And just as a reminder, if you were to watch this video here, this video here is a video of me showing you how to do everything here. When you are going to do these tasks, you just hover your mouse over that linked task. See how that black box pops up? That black box is basically your instructions for doing that particular task, okay? And I am, I am a teacher at heart, so I do things very teachery, all right? So you'll get used to me. Um, but this is a, this is a brainstorming activity that you do before you start exploring the food library. Why do I have you do that? So that you can purposefully be exploring the food library in a way that's going to benefit you. So we all eat different things. We all like different things. So I want you to do this little activity. So I'm going to read it. One of the best ways to begin to familiarize yourself with the food library is to do the following brainstorming activity. You take a blank sheet of paper and write down in no particular order all the foods that you can think of, like, or eat on a regular basis. Then look up each of those foods on your paper and write down next to it what category it's in. Once you've done all of that, take another sheet of paper, or you can use the, uh, the, the worksheet that's in this third task here. You could use that one if you wanted to, but if you don't have a printer, you can just do this on regular paper. It's okay. Once you've done that, take another sheet of paper and organize your list by categories. So there's only seven categories of foods, but we need to know which foods that we all like that go in the categories so that we can then use that combination chart to build meals. So as you're exploring, heart each food item that you like, or here's a new one, if you think you might even like to try it, go ahead and heart it because it will remind you later when you look at your favorites. Oh yeah, I wanted to try that. Okay, let's get that. And then if for some reason you don't like that item, you can go back in and unheart things. But once you see something and you like it, it's safer to heart it and get it into a smaller list than to not heart it and wish that you had. Okay, so go ahead and heart those things. And your favorites can be found in two places. Your favorites can be found in your journal, under my favorites in your journal, or in the food library, which I'm about to show you. In the food library, it's going to have a my favorites tab. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click there. We're now into the food library. This thing is awesome. This is one of the best things about Shibboleth, in my opinion. This is apple cider vinegar, about a tablespoon. I don't measure it. I just pour it in there, but probably about a tablespoon with um, crayon pineapple, the, the five calorie crayon pineapple. It's a nice little drink to end the day. So <clears throat> there's, there's some filters that you can use on this page that I really like. And you can go straight to the filters if you want to. But I don't typically go straight to the filters. I typically go to the uh, category that I like, and then I click in the filters from that area. But let me just show you. I'm going to click on filters <coughs> And so it's going to pull up some filters that are very handy. Hey, Deb, good. I'm glad you are. It's very good. It's very good. So basically what it did just then is this has pulled up the entire food library and it's got all these filters here. So, you know, like um, I had somebody ask me yesterday about gluten-free. So if I click gluten-free, it's going to redo my list and it's going to take out anything that has gluten in it. Now, I do want to say Double check everything. And if you find something that's incorrect, please let us know so that we can mark it. Okay. But there would be your gluten free list. There, it'll go, it'll go on and on. Believe me, it'll go on and on. 
Okay, so you can go to the filters that way. But typically what I do is I go into the actual category and then I click the filters at the top. So let's say I'm looking for, um, let's say I'm looking for bread. So I click on that bread. Now bread, most breads, well, breads don't just come in a category of bread. They come in a category one or I mean, maybe two or three. So I'm on breads. Now, if I need just gluten-free bread, I click gluten-free. Do you see how that's much easier to just uh, narrow that down? So that's the way you would do that. There's your gluten-free options. Now I'm gonna go back to the food library and show something else because if we have anybody on here that um, is a vegan or vegetarian, you still need to have some lean proteins. And so what you would do is you would go into the lean protein category or the protein plus fat category. And look, there's a vegan filter and there's a vegetarian filter. I just clicked the vegetarian filter. And so now it's going to re redo the list. Okay, so you use those filters to your benefit. Um, remember how I said the my favorites tab would be right here, here, anything that you heart, see like I've hearted that one and I've hearted that one. Anything that I've hearted goes right here in my favorites. So I'm gonna click on my favorites and it takes just a second to generate the list. You Sometimes it looks like that and people, if they're on their phone, they just get happy clicking. And I'm like, just wait, click and click and remove the hand, click, remove the hand. <laughs> Don't be the happy clicker because it just sometimes takes a second because it's a lot of information that's trying to pull up. Okay, so here's all the things that I've hearted. I could even choose to see it in 100 entries, not just 25. Hey, Rebecca, glad you're here. And then if you're looking for something specific that you know that you've hearted, you can search for it right there. If you want to readjust your list on the weight loss meter, you can do that. It's very light. But do you see how there's a little arrow button right here? If you just click in that field or that cell, it's going to reorder those. I See, I clicked once and I waited. So like, don't be the happy clicker on, on the computer either. And now we've got the weight loss meter. So right now, all these just haven't been marked, okay? Somebody just hasn't taken the time to go in there and mark those. And that happens sometimes. Okay, but there we go. Now all of our negative threes are there and then we just go on and on. And then this is the number of likes that people have gotten it and then if they've been rated. So I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Okay, but when you're not in fast track anymore, you're gonna access the food library through right here, this green resources, foods and recipes button. So I'm gonna click on food library. Okay. And see where it says add new food? If you actually have a food that you want to add, we don't want you to use that button. Just use the Facebook, Shibboleth fixed it. Now, if you did lap one, you, you were directed to join that group, okay? So if you've done lap one, you've already gotten in that group, okay? But this is a big backup on it, and Kim actually is able to get to them easier and quicker in the Shibboleth Fixed It group. So if there's a food that you want to see if it could be added, you take a picture of the front of the item. I'm going to talk about weight loss meter tonight, Jennifer. Um, you take a picture of the front of the item and the back of the item and you post it in that group. Now, always you want to look for things first. And then if you can't find them and you're curious, then you can add them to that group. And then Kim will add them there. So if you're looking at all this on your phone, the categories are just going to be listed straight down over here, like on the right here. But if you're looking at this on the computer, it's going to, you're going to have both views, like a lean protein with a little paragraph about what a lean protein is fibrous carbs and what a, a little paragraph about what they are. So you get both views on a computer. I do think that you might, if you have access to a computer, that you might enjoy this on a computer just a little bit more when you're doing fast track, okay? But once you get to moving around in there, you'll you'll see that. Okay, so we got all these categories listed on the side and see that's where it starts stops with category seven. But then we have condiments and creamer and then freebies snacks, extras, 
meal replacements, perfect pairing items. What perfect pairing means that is that it does not follow the rules. But if you do it exactly as prescribed, we'll, we'll call it T-scribed because Travis comes up with these, exactly as it is T-scribed, then it'll work. Okay, so that's why it's called a perfect pairing, meaning he's put a, two things together that will, will work fine. There's breads, low blood sugar snacks, phase one cereal, phase two cereal, phase two frozen meals, phase two soups. I'm going to stop right there and explain this. Phase one is always going to be the better, higher quality of food. Phase two is just more variety, but it does not necessarily mean that you've moved into a higher, better phase. It just means you've got more variety, okay? Um, and if you're looking for specifically Atkins stuff, there you go. There's pizza, flour, and breading. So we've just put some groupings on the side here that you can access and just get to those, those things that are used most often, quickly, and easily off to the side. Milk, salad dressing beverages, beer, wine, and liquor, spices and seasonings, cooking oils, healthy fats, gluten-free products. There's a gluten-free filter right there, vitamins and supplements, other pre and post-workout freebies, and restaurant fast food category, and coach mode meals, okay? So I'm not, we're not going to look at all of those. That this is, you are on a nutrition adventure, okay? You are going to find little nuggets and treasures all over this website, okay? There's so many places for you to find ideas of what to eat, what you can eat, and what's good to eat all over this website. It's amazing. I do want to mention these coach mode meals real quick. When you click on coach mode meals, these are very simple, pretty easy, and very calorie controlled meals. So if that was your goal is to be very calorie controlled, which we don't even talk about calories that much. Y'all didn't hear me say anything about let's count calories. I haven't said that in the two nights that you've heard me because we simply use our two hands as our measuring tool. And that gets us into the calorie deficit that we need to without having to count calories. So we use our two hands. We just don't eat more than what we what fits underneath our two hands. And we're going to eat foods in a way that control insulin. When we do those, we don't really have to pay much attention to calories. But I just mentioned those this here because they you, you might read more about that in this because this is meant to be very tightly controlled. So if you want any of those, they're simple, like one cup of Pintos. Uh, when you click on it, it'll give you uh, a paragraph about it. And there's also a recipe. So crock pot Pinto beans, you could do that. Simple, one handful of almonds, macadamia nuts, or pumpkin seeds. A Quest bar with one health-wise hot chocolate or cocoa ringa hot chocolate. A third of a hemp bar. I eat that a lot for breakfast. It's so good. Quarter cup of pumpkin seeds as a snack. Two handfuls of pistachios and so forth. I'm not going to read all of these to you. When you see AHS, that stands for Advanced Health Systems. And it's a, it's a product, like it's a manufactured product. Uh, we sell that at our store, but they are meant for weight loss. They're not required to be purchased. I just wanted you to know what AHS stands for. Um, now, any wow challenge. It says any wow challenge, but when you do a wow challenge, and we're going to talk about those later in the week, when you do a wow challenge, it's not just a meal. It is for the whole day. So you, if you choose a wow challenge, it's for the whole day. Approved shakes, the baby carrots. See, here's the thing. Baby carrots, one handful as, as a snack. If they're cooked carrots, they're a category three energy carb, and you must eat those with a lean protein and a fibrous carb. This one's real popular, berries, yogurt, and hemp flakes, makes a little parfait. Uh, you can read that little paragraph right here. It'll take you to the recipe. And if you want to see it in our store, like to buy, oops. Well, I lost track of it. 
But anyway, if you wanted to buy it in the store, it also shows you how to see it in the store, the, the hemp flakes. So that they show that. Okay, so those are just a few things about the um, the food library. I would highly suggest that you look at those coach mode meals because in lap one, there was a document that everyone should have printed called Travis's Fast Start Meal Ideas. Those are quick and easy things to get started. And so are these coach mode meals. But you don't have to stick in coach mode meals all the time, okay? It's just a place for you to find food options. <clears throat> okay, so now what I'd like for y'all to do is just to throw out there some foods that you're curious about, whole foods, whole foods, please don't say pizza, like real whole foods, because pizza has to be built with whole foods, or we could just look at the pizza category, okay, and y'all can look at pizza category on its own, but something that you're curious about, you're like, okay, what are what are what are lima beans? What are black eyed peas? What are black beans? Tell, tell me some whole foods that we can look up, okay? And I'd like to at least see three in the chat. And if you're on Facebook and want to know about one, let me know. We'll throw it in here. Beets. That's a good one. Never heard of that one. Never never had anybody say that one. Beets. <laughs> Beets. Okay, so. Okay, awesome. I see two more over here in Facebook. So beets, all right? Now look, we got Annie, I mean, Aunt Nellie's baby whole pickled beets, Aunt Nellie's sliced pickled beets, Aunt Nellie's whole pickled beets, just beets, and then old world pickled baby beets. So these are your beets, you know, straight from the, straight from the ground over in the produce section. And these are some that are canned or pickled and had things done to them, okay? This zero means weight loss meter. So this is a zero on the weight loss meter. This means it's not gonna help you, not gonna hurt you. But look over here at beets, actual beets. It's a negative one on the weight loss meter. So here right here is the weight loss meter. The weight loss meter is a way for us to, I'm just gonna use this word, judge foods. How good are they for weight loss? Um, so we go from a negative three to a positive three. So the more negative the number, the better it is for weight loss. Zero, right in the center, not gonna help you, not gonna hurt you. Positive numbers are better kept for maintenance, but if you have a positive number in weight loss, it's okay, it's not gonna throw you out of efficient fat burning or anything like that. It just might be that you don't wanna do that three times a day, seven days a week, okay? So you just wanna keep that in mind. So you can see the weight loss meter in two places. It's always gonna be listed right here at the end of an item in this listing. And then when we click on beets, I'll also show you where it is. So two people have taken the time to say they like this product. Six on this one, one, 95 people have taken the time to say they like beets. And that's just member entered data. That's not Shibboleth entered data. And then we'll go over a grocery list tomorrow, but that's what this is. If you wanted to add it to your grocery list, you just simply click that. The reason that we go over that tomorrow and specifically talk about grocery lists is you have to build a grocery list first before you have a grocery list to be able to add things to, okay? Um, so we're gonna click on beets and it's a category two fibrous carb. It can also be used as a freebie and it's a gluten-free product. So these are how they are uh, tagged. You're right, Gloria. Gloria says the weight loss meter is genius. It is. Okay, Travis came up with that. I would say yes, Ruth. I would say that beets can be used with Braggs. Yeah. Braggs isn't going to hurt anything, anybody, anytime. Uh, and I'm assuming you're talking about the apple cider vinegar. So these are the things these have been um, canned beets. Yeah, it can be canned beets. Mm -hmm. Yep, Tabitha, it can be canned. So now you just want to make sure that the canned beets that you purchase aren't um, full of stuff, you know. Uh, that kind of thing. So these have these tags to them. 
So it's a fibrous carb. One cup is your um, amount, but in weight loss mode, it's best to stick with your fibrous carb being around a, a half a cup, but y'all fit fits underneath your hand and it's no thicker, you know, than the thickest part of your hand, then you can, you can, um, you can have that. Here's the weight loss meter on this page and you get colors. So the more negative, the number, the, the color will change to red and so forth. Uh, this is another place to add to the grocery store and you can heart it from right there as well. We come on down, it gives you all of the nutrition info about this. And then there's even descriptions. Uh, let's see. To comply with phase four, okay, phase four is just if, if in the future, if you want to learn more about organic fruits and veggies, then that's what that is. The serving size would be half a cup with another category two, a category three, or a category five. Pickled varieties will not work. So we need to go back and read on the pickled and see what it says. Roasted whole and then diced or sliced is a great is, is great to add to a salad or plain as a freebie. See how it said plain? If you've cooked that up in anything like MCT oil, it don't look no longer a freebie there. These are the vegetables that are the best for you. They are high in fiber and low in calories. These vegetables combined with category one proteins create a perfect meal for boosting your metabolic rate immediately and for continued boosted effects. Continual cons consumption of category two vegetables is optimal for weight loss and maintenance. So it's not just saying that beets are that, it's category two vegetables. So see, it says pickled varieties will not work. So let's go back over here and let's look up at these because we had some pickled varieties here. All these are pickled. Okay, so see, this is a condiment. Okay, so that's that's pretty important to look at. You can use that as a condiment. Let's look at this one. Condiment. So this is this this is how I learn. I just play. Condiment. So that means you could use up to 50 calories of that and it would work. Condiment. Okay. So any pickled beets are condiments. So that's why it said pickled beets do not work as a category two. That's what that means. So that was a good one. Thank you, Michelle, for doing that. Okay. And let's look up chickpeas. It's kind of good to look up these chickpeas because I, I typically say all peas are a category three energy carb except for the pea, the chickpea, who masquerades as a bean, the garbanzo bean, okay? So that's where it is, chickpeas, garbanzo beans, beans. We're gonna click there, okay? I like these, I haven't rated these yet, so I'm, but I'm gonna go ahead and click a five just to show you. And then I've hearted them already. They're a negative one on the weight loss meter. They are a category six superfood. So there's the answer to chickpeas, Myra. They're a category six superfood. And so that just means to you, you wouldn't eat those with um, a category four protein plus fat, or you really wouldn't eat these with other things that bring an insulin release either, like your uh, energy carbs or your fruit. It can also be used as a condiment and it's a gluten-free product. So then we'll scroll down here and it says, you can have a quarter cup if combining with another protein, up to one cup if you're having it alone as your only protein source combined with a category two or up to one and a half cups if having alone as a complete meal. So there's three different options right there. You can have it with another protein. Um, you can have it alone with a category two. I mean, you can have it combined with a category two or you can have it all by itself. And that gives you several different ways. And then if we scroll down, Look at all these. These are the recipes that are linked to chickpeas, which is also a garbanzo bean. So there's, there's recipes, which look good. And then if you want to know how they rate, you can click right there and have them uh, be rated in order. So that's really nice. Okay, so let's see. We had artichokes. Artichokes. Um, there's artichokes. It's a negative one on the weight loss meter. Pickled artichokes, a negative one. And this is Sabatino's smoked mozzarella with artichokes and garlic chicken sausage. Okay, so let's look at artichokes. 
Artichokes, they are a category two fibrous carb, a freebie and a gluten-free product. Half a cup up to one cup is your amount. Like I said, though, in weight loss mode, it's best to stay at half a cup. And then description. And I'm not going to read all that because it kind of says the same thing as what the beets said, okay? And then there's some recipes that go with artichokes. So these are a category two fibrous carb. So if you like artichokes and you've already got a list started, you can write those down. Same thing for the beets and then the, the chickpeas, AKA the uh, garbanzo bean. Okay, so let's have a look at peas. So Tabitha says peas. Well, there's a lot of different peas. So I'm just gonna put peas in here. Oh, wait a second, before I do that, I actually wanted to go back and look at these other things that had artichoke in it. We learned so much by exploring in this. Pickled artichokes. Okay, so pickled artichokes are a category two fibrous carb where those pickled beets were not. And then this also is a freebie, half a cup up to one cup. But if you're doing it as a freebie, I would try to do as little as possible, okay? Just because it helps to do as little as possible. And then let's go back over here. And just out of curiosity, let's check out this sausage. Okay, so it's a sausage that has artichokes and garlic in it. It's a chicken sausage. This is a category four protein plus fat. You can have one sausage as a category four. And that's what it says. All right. See, this is the type thing that Shibola just didn't go around saying, oh, let me find this Sabatino's. I've never even heard of that brand. Somebody said, can this be, can this be added to the food library? And they sent it in and that's probably even the picture that they took in their own home. See the pretty uh, counter? All right, so categories. Let's look up peas. There's lots of different kinds of peas, but this is what I'm gonna say. Peas are a category three energy carb, except the chickpea that masquerades as a garbanzo bean. Okay, so look at all of these. All of these things are peas. You're going to find all your peas here. So like black-eyed peas, these are, I like black-eyed peas. I'm going to give them a five. They're a category three energy carb. In weight loss mode, it's best to stick at a quarter cup of those because then you're going to need to pair that with a lean protein and a fibrous carb, okay? So come down here and it gives you a description. Beans are an excellent, oh, beans. Well, this is peas, but anyway, I'm not gonna read that then. All right, so let's go back because I wanna see some other things that are listed here. Okay, there's Crowder peas, category three energy carb. Yep, all, pea, all peas are a category three, except for the one I told you about and should be eaten with a category one and two only. So peas, there's lots of peas and you want to consider peas, even, even these green peas. See, look, people think green, they think like veggie, which this is veggie. I mean, we, we, this isn't, okay. When I say that, y'all know how we do. We put everything under the umbrella of veggie and they all act different. That's why you're going to find things that you consider veggies to be in category two. You're going to find them in category three. You're going to find them in category six. Those are the places that you're going to say, I found my veggies here, but they all respond differently in your body. You just got to figure out which ones. So just because it's green doesn't mean that it is a category two fibrous carb. So this is an energy carb. And then there's some different recipes that have got uh, green peas in them. All right, so there's peas, and then let's, we'll, we'll, we'll keep going on another topic now, and then we will do that. But this is, y'all see how that was helpful to just come up with your list, like you and the family, y'all sit down and y'all start like, boom, 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 coming up with all y'all's things, and then just look them up and write down the category, and then um, write down here, I'm going to go ahead and skip to number three real quick. We're going to create a list of our favorites in each category on this fast track worksheet. Print and use the attached worksheet to begin creating lists of your personal favorite foods in each list. The great thing about this worksheet is that you can print and create as many as you need. Now, if you don't have a printer, just create it on a separate sheet of paper. But let's click here. So this worksheet just gives you a place, gives you a place to put lean proteins fibrous carbs, 
energy carbs, protein plus fat, fruit, superfoods, shellfish. So one of my suggestions to folks is print three and then focus in on one of them being all breakfast items. Make another one be things you like to do at lunch. Make another one for dinner. That would give you thinking on these different types of meals on the separate sheets. So just another way to think about it. Um, so I want y'all to fill this in. This is filling in this worksheet. Okay. The next thing we're going to talk about is our timing chart. This is going to be very, very important. At, you're going to click on the timing chart above. See where that says it's blue. It says timing chart. It's to the left of the pink online webinars tab and to the right of your journal, just right up above where it says weekly timing chart. That's where you're going to click and you're going to view your personal timing chart there because the link, the link here is to a video that I did on the timing chart. And I wanted you to be able to see that too. So that's why I did it that way. Um, the link, the link is a, in this task is to a video on how to use your timing chart to your benefit. Your timing chart is going to be an extremely valuable tool for you. It is a great visual as to whether or not you're doing your best. On your first and second perfect days, you're going to see a green check. On your third perfect day, you're going to see a flame. And now you are in EFB, baby, efficient fat burning. Your body is now in a state where it can burn fat efficiently. Okay, so I'm just going to click here to show you that it comes up to a video. And you'll just watch this video here. Okay, but what I want to do is I'm going to come up here to this timing chart and I'm going to take this timing chart all the way back to the very first time that I started because it makes more sense for you to see one of a person just starting than mine now after being in maintenance for two years. So this was my very first perfect day. I got this check on my timing chart because I journaled that I was having a perfect day right there. Then on my second perfect day, I journaled that I was having a perfect day. Whatever you journal in your journal, what type of day you're having, it knows to create the right icon on here. So that's why I have two perfect days. And on my third day, it's, my per it's a perfect day, but now I am in, in EFB, efficient fat burning. And then you just want to string as many efficient fat burning days together as you can. So there we go, EFB, 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 and so forth. And then, you know, planned or unplanned, a holiday is coming. We are living life. A holiday is going to come. This was Easter, and I go to Alabama for Easter, and I like Alabama Easter food, and I wanted to eat it. So I did. I had a two holidays in a row. Well, I got right back from there, and now that I know what to do, I got back to business. There, I had a perfect day. Well, what this little icon is, is this is an intermittent fasting perfect day. While I was gone to Alabama, I watched the videos, the gold level daily dose videos, and I learned about intermittent fasting, which there's, there's longer times of intermittent fasting, but at its basic level, if you go at least 12 hours without eating, including overnight hours, then you can call it an intermittent fasting perfect day if you also meet all the other parts of the uh, of the shield, okay? Well, once I learned that, I thought I easily go 12 hours without eating. That's great. I want to do that. So I intermittent fast. Most every perfect day that I have is also an intermittent fasting day. Now, on this day, I'm sure I did an intermittent fasting day, but I also did a wow challenge. So the wow challenge little icon right there uh, to the top right of the flame just took precedence over intermittent fasting because you were doing something special there. So it says wow. And then I did another wow just because I'm just playing and I am having fun and I'm just trying things out and making them go and getting results at the same time. And then this is an EFB day where I'm intermittent fasting and so forth. Okay. These little gray boxes, here's the symbol and here's the meaning. So E means that you did an exercise challenge. W means that you entered a weight entry. 
P means you added a progress photo. M stands for updating your measurements. C indicates you participated in a challenge. J means you requested a journal review. And one through 10 indicates your motivation level on doing the lifestyle. So look at this. I had a three. So it was like, okay, I'm excited, but yeah. Okay, so it was a three. And then look, it went to a four. And then it went to a five. And then I was at a five. And then five, six, seven. And I just kind of kept it at seven for some time. And then I must have had a fun day that day. I'm like, let me give myself an eight. Now, every day is a 10. I am excited because I now know what I've got my hands on. And two years later, I'm loving every minute of it. So the reason that this chart is so important to you and remember, you get this from journaling what type of day you're having. It creates the icon over here. So it means you'll go into your journal each day and do that. Um, if you go into your journal in the morning and choose that you're having a perfect day and then something happens and it turns out to be a holiday, you just simply go back in there and change it. But once I say I'm having this type of day, I try my best to stick to it. And that's a really good, you know, it's a good way to use that. But there are going to be days where you wake up and you get on the scale and you are not going to like that it didn't go down a pound. You're not going to like that it didn't even go down half a pound. You're, you know, in the beginning, your weight loss is going to go, psh, okay, and then it's going to normalize, okay, it, it will. So just don't, that's normal. You just got to know that that's normal, all right? So The reason I want you to know about this chart and how important it is, is on those days where that scale, and let me just say it's a lying scale, that lying scale, see, it's not always telling you fat loss. See, that scale weighs water, it weighs glycogen, it weighs food that's still in there. It's not weighing just fat loss, okay? So you just need to know that if that scale doesn't tell you what you want to, thank you for those uh, likes on Facebook, that if that scale is not telling you what you want to hear or see, you've got to say, okay, Kim said to go check out my timing chart. And if you've got flames up there, something else is masking whatever the scale, whatever this is masking or adding to the weight on the scale. Okay. It's just masking the trueness of what's going on. This is not masking anything because you've told it what type of days you're having. And one thing I want to say is if you let the scale determine your mood, it won't be long before you're eating food. Okay. So don't get on the scale, get all bummed out. If you do happen to have that happen, come over here and go, oh yeah, I'm doing the right thing. Okay. It's, I, I can trust that my body is efficiently burning fat. It will catch up. There's something else masking that right now. It will all catch up. Y'all just trust me. It will catch up. So use this to determine. Have any of y'all do any investing? Okay, long-term investing. You know, you've got 401k or Roth IRA, or maybe you have a, um, a variable universal life insurance program or something. You know, you've got these little annuities and things. You don't look at them daily and see what they do. You'd probably be like, wait, I got to take my money in, out, in, out, in, out. Your, your mood would be up and down, up and down if you looked at long-term investments every day, okay? So this is the same way. Don't let that scale bother you, okay? You're going to have great results and you just keep plowing along no matter what you're doing. And if you really want a good visual that, uh, to know that you're truly doing your best, you come to your timing chart and you go, okay, okay, it'll catch up. I'm doing the right thing. Look at me. I'm doing the right thing. I've got flames. I want to keep flames. Going to have flames. And it's going to be that day that you just keep a perfect day, even though you were a little frustrated. And the next day is going to be like down a pound and you're going to go, yeah, okay, awesome. So, cause yes, we are thrilled by the scale. I know I don't, I don't pretend to know. I mean, think we're not, but I want you to know that this is a non-scale visual of how well you are personally doing and putting effort at it. All right. So let's have a look. So anyway, I didn't say this, but once you've familiarized yourself with the food library and you know how that works, you can just simply check that box. Now, for those of you um, 
that go to the food library and you don't see all that food I was seeing, you're only seeing a limited list, it might be because you haven't passed the test at the end of the fast track badge, I mean the fast track videos. So you can take it right there. You just take the test, you know, you just read the questions and answer. So you can take it there. Some of you may have watched these 14 little videos right here. And then when you got to the bottom, you may have already taken this test, okay? So it shows up right there. But if for some reason you're not seeing all of the foods you think you should see in the, in the food library, if it's just small, like 24 foods, you haven't taken the test yet. So just go back and do that because it'll open it up. All right, so once you have looked at the time and chart, watch the video and know that it's important, just go ahead and check the box, okay? And then, I already talked about this one. I showed you that, that, that um, worksheet. So once you've made your lists, then you just check the box, okay? Whether you're doing it on the worksheet or on a separate sheet of paper, just go ahead and check the box. All right, the next thing is create meals on your Fast Track worksheet. So you have your lists of lean proteins, fibers, carbs, energy carbs, and so forth. And what I want you to do now is I want you to build some meals. So what is something from your lean protein category and something from your shellfish cat or, or, or something from your shellfish category? It actually could be both if you wanted to like have chicken here and shellfish here. You can do that. You can do two lean proteins. It's just they will fit underneath that hand to give room for your category two under this hand. Or you could have one protein here. You could actually have two category twos under this hand, okay? You just want to still make sure it fits and all of that business. Okay, so you're going to pick something from one of those categories and then something from the category two. And if you are cooking it up in MCT oil, there's just a reminder that you can cook an MCT oil and make it be the fastest fat burning combination. But if you've got lean protein, let's say that you've got Oikos triple zero yogurt and you're gonna have it with some hemp flakes, you wouldn't use MCT oil in that, okay? So you would just leave that blank, okay? But it's just there as a reminder if you wanna make your fastest fat burning combination. I also wanna remind you that MCT oil is not to be getting in. You don't have to get it in. It is not taken as a supplement. We don't need to get it in. You just use it if you're cooking, making recipes, or making salad dressings. We don't, we don't take it as a supplement. Take it as make bulletproof coffee with it, put it in a shake or anything like that. We just use it for those other three reasons. And then over here on the right-hand side, you're just going to build some meals. And I just didn't have enough paper to just do tons and tons. You can create as many as you want to on other paper. But this is just going to give you three, three spots to build a lean protein, fibrous carb, and energy carb meal. This one is a lean protein, a fibrous carb, and a fruit meal. This is a protein plus fat and a fibrous carb. And this is a superfood and a fibrous carb. So you're just going to build some meals from your list up there. It's going to be fun. You're going to try new things. And then where it says freebies, extra snacks, and meal replacements, if you want to scoot ahead, you can, but we are going to do this on uh, lap five. On lap five, we're going to be looking at freebies, extra snacks, and meal replacements, but y'all can scoot around in these laps, in and out of all the laps. You, you know, they're kind of meant to be done in order, but you can scoot over. It's fine. You just want to know that you've got to go back and finish what you didn't finish, okay? And you definitely want to have taken the test so that you see all your freebies, extra snacks, meal replacement options, okay? So back here on lap three, once you have created some meals on your Fast Track worksheet, you simply just check that box. That's all. Uh, does anybody have any questions about what we've gone over tonight? And if you do, go ahead and ask them. The other thing is, <clears throat> how many of you have had a perfect day? Maybe Monday and Tuesday? Who's had some perfect days since Sunday night when you learned the over, overview? How many have had some perfect days? I would love to hear that. And while y'all are in, hey, Michelle, Michelle's had perfect days. Awesome. 
Rebecca has. It's fabulous. Thank you, Rebecca. Let's see, Tabitha. I'm going to have my first perfect day on Saturday. Awesome. Jenny has. Good. So let me ask those of you who have been having perfect days, how do y'all feel? Hey, Teresa. Teresa's having perfect days too. How do y'all feel? Are you feeling better? Because I think that that's the most exciting thing to get day one and day two under your belt. Yes, Teresa's feeling better. Y'all, our bodies can actually heal pretty quickly if we start doing the right thing for it. So it's very exciting because after you get any uh, insulin that's in your body, get it at bay and get uh, any glycogen, the sugar stores out of there, you're going to feel great. Just to give you a little tip, I did have somebody ask me a question one time. They said, I'm really, that's awesome, Rebecca. Rebecca says that she feels lighter and she's not as tired. And then Elise, can you remind me where the tutorial video is for the journal? Yes, in fact, I'm going to show you because I also want to show y'all to where to register for Travis and Sasha's interview tonight. They're doing an interview themselves. Go, go right here to videos and print material. Well, first of all, Elise, if you go to lap one and watch this tutorial video, I go over it a little bit in here because it's the last task right here. So I'll go over it a little bit in that video. But otherwise, come over here to videos and print material. You know what? I should link this to that. I'm clicking on silver because I know that most of the beginner videos are silver after the fast track ones. And it says right here, tutorial videos. Okay, Wendy, I'll show you where to get started. Tutorial videos. Right there, there's one using your Shibboleth journal. And Elise, there's a little bit more right here where it says how to add a supplement to your journal and so forth. Huh, Kim, that's interesting. Are you in a different browser than you were earlier in the week by chance? Okay, awesome, awesome, Elise. Kim, I'm writing that down. I'll look in your account and see. I'll look in your account and see if I can see what's going on because it should be there. It's in the food library and in the recipe library. I mean, excuse me, it's not in the recipe library. It's in the food library and the restaurant guide. Um, Wendy, Wendy says, I haven't watched the video you just talked about. Just trying to get started. Didn't quite know where to start. Okay, where you start is in Fast Track. Okay, Kim, let me check into it just a second. And you come right here. Wendy, and in lap one. So this is where you want to put blinders on, put blinders on. We got all kinds of other fun and cool things that you can do later. But right now we got to put blinders on and do lap one through lap seven. So what I want you to do, Wendy, is read this paragraph and then just, you can watch this little video here. This little video is just me talking about these tasks. But then you just start with this task and read that black box and do the task. Then you read the black box and do that task. And then this one, all the way through this one are just printable things that if you have a printer, you can print. These are about joining the Facebook groups and so forth. So that's basically where you get started, Wendy. But the video that I talked about Sunday night and Monday night if you come right here to lap two, it says watch the daily fast track webinars. That's where you'll see that. Um, and these videos like tonight are just extra. No, they're 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 required <laughs> Be because you really won't know what to do if you don't. So the thing is, they are all recorded and they're put into this little list right here. So when it says watch the daily fast track webinars, there are seven. That's what I'm doing tonight. So if you click there, you're going to see there's the Sunday night webinar. There's the Monday night. There's the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and Saturday. And then it starts over. I do this same exact thing. Yeah, Wendy, that's what I, I, I'm trying. We are trying to take the overwhelming out of it. You're welcome. We do try. Um, that's why when I started two years, uh, well, a little over more two, than two years ago, there was no fast track. 
there was no fast track. I just started watching the silver level daily doses. I clicked on every link and every tab and all of that. But that's why this was created. Yes, this is this this was created here. And then you just kind of just very methodically do and check. Read the box, do it, check. Read the box. And as you're doing that, as you, yay, Elise, that's awesome. Elise says the fast track is a game changer. Yes. So you read the black box, you do the task, you check. And if you do all of those things, every bit of knowledge that you've got from the task before is going to add into the next task and the next task and the next task. It's just going to be building a really great framework of knowledge for you. When it comes to the welcome packet, I want you to read it. I want you to read the whole thing, okay? Because if you start skimming stuff, thinking, ah, this is just, bleh. no, this is the most important thing you can do in your whole entire life. Take care of your body. You only get one and you you live in there. You your, your body, mind, spirit, everything is here. And this is the most important thing that you can do. You just block out all the other stuff and focus. Focus on this and just methodically do it. All right, I saw another question I wanted to answer. Kim, I, if, even if I have to respond to you a little bit later, Kim, I'll have a look and see if I see anything funny in your account. Okay, awesome. Okay, so tonight in about five minutes, Travis and Sasha, like normally we have an interview on Tuesday night with two members, but we are running that anniversary special and Travis and Sasha are doing the interview tonight. So basically kind of Travis is interviewing Sasha and she might be interviewing him back a little bit. They're really fun. So y'all go watch that. And most importantly, please, please, please share this with your friends. Please share this with your friends so they'll know. They'll get to hear from our founders tonight. All right. Well, our founder and the CEO, Sasha. She's the CEO. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so let's click here to the pink online webinars tab. And then if you click right here on Travis's events, or this just lists everybody's events right down here. Let's just look here. Tuesday, how I overcame food addiction and lost weight. You simply go right there to that register button. That's where you get it. And if you just click there, right click and copy, you can paste that on Facebook. You can send other people to register. And we really like for people to register in these because when people register <coughs> and participate in the Zoom room, you know, it's immediate if they've got questions. Facebook just has a slight delay. So, all right, well, I'm going to, I'm going to um, hop off because I'm going to watch that webinar too. And I will see y'all in the morning for the Shibby show um, around 730, 740-ish in the mornings. And then Tomorrow night, again at 7.30, and we're going to be going over the recipe library and building a um, building a grocery list and all that. The last thing I want to say, uh, just going back to the overwhelmingness, all you have to do is do the five things. This other stuff that I'm showing you is really just to highlight our website. Don't be overwhelmed by it. Let it be a learning and fun adventure. But if you just go ahead and start getting your water in, that doesn't require knowing the website, writing down what you eat. It helps if you journal it online, but even if you just wrote it down in the beginning, just go ahead. But y'all can go in there and choose what type of day you're having. Y'all can do that. It's not that hard. And then combining food in a way that controls insulin that's why I go over the website like I do, because I want y'all to be able to find all the cool things that you want to eat. Portion controlling, that doesn't require knowing the website. And then having breakfast, lunch, and dinner. If you want breakfast or you want dinner, you don't have to eat all three meals. But if you do, try to give yourself four to six hours between meals. And then if you're having a moment where you feel like you're going to give in, utilize an extra, an extra. That's Alabama, Southern Alabama. Use an extra, a freebie, or a snack. Okay, so y'all can do that without even knowing too much about the website. But I just want to make sure that y'all understand how to use it because it's such a fabulous tool. All right, y'all have a great night. I'll see you in the morning and tomorrow night. Bye.